What's up, boys? This is negative. This video, guys, can teach you how to perform a modification to your GameCube controllers so that you can basically perform pivot up tilts with ease, all right? So here's the modification. You can see there's a band at the top of the controller here, and that's gonna be very useful to us. Now, if you are a claw grip user, let's say you probably already move your control stick like this, right? If you put your finger along the top rim here, you can already perform pivot up tilts and that'll make sure that you don't get up smash and if you put your thumb there you can make sure that'll get you down tilt instead of down smash so if you're a claw grip user get the fuck out nobody cares because you're weird this is for the standard regular gamecube controller users all right basically guys this band is going to make it to where when you're tilting right there's going to be a little bit of tension um, on the band as you enter the tilt region and you can stop at that or you can just keep pressing and go all the way through it right and still hit all of the coordinates along the top so it's not going to restrict you from being able to hit the upper coordinates however it's going to make it easier for you to do pivot up tilts and press it quickly and not get up smash so that is the goal we're gonna have to pick up a few items along the way though um, luckily for you they're all very very cheap so let's get into it first thing we're gonna need some nails all right these are 7 8 by 18 that is not metric and basically they're a flat top and they're about the uh the height of probably an lr trigger maybe a little bit shorter they're still too long all right so what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna take those and we're gonna need some kind of tool like this where we can snip the nails to a shorter length so these pliers have a protrusion on each side at the bottom here and we can put the nail in between it and squeeze it and it's gonna break that nail into two so we can use those to cut our nail a little bit shorter and basically we'll drill our holes or hammer our nail in and then we're gonna pull the nail out snip it to the appropriate length and then reinsert it now if you don't have a drill, right? Because a drill is the preferred method. It's gonna be a lot more controlled. It's gonna be easier to do. It's gonna be uh, a much more reliable method of uh, making your holes. Otherwise, get yourself a hammer. Pound that bitch in, all right? It's gonna work. I did it, worked just fine. But, you know, if you can get your hands on a drill, you just gotta make sure that you get a drill bit that's narrow enough to where the hole isn't gonna to be too loose because that nail needs to be very, very snug so that when you apply a bunch of tension on the band uh, while you're tying it off and doing all that stuff, it's not gonna pull the nails out, all right? So you can go ahead and glue them in, but I prefer to do that step afterwards. So that is a, a sneak preview. It's what you'll need next. We're gonna need some super glue, all right? $3 dries in 10 seconds very useful next we are going to need a few common household items dental floss shouldn't be too hard all right you can get some believe me scotch tape once again very easy to get a sharpie very simple right we're going to use that to mark where we're going to be drilling our holes and we're also going to need some scissors pretty easy right I'm not asking for a whole lot here guys there's two more items you might have to buy uh, maybe not let's see so these are a pack of quilt pins all right they're little pins with a ball on the top you don't really need anything like this this is just kind of what I had it was useful uh, but what you can buy are uh, or you know if you have them around you can use sewing needles sewing needles will work or you can just use a paper clip. If you have a paper clip, you just bend it really straight. Basically what we need is a straight piece of metal um, that's not going to bend a lot uh, when we apply a, a slight bit of force to it. And that's going to function as a, uh, basically a test that we can just keep running to make sure that we have the right position for uh, where we're gonna drill our holes before we go ahead and start drilling or hammering nails into our controller. Last but not least, we have the key piece to this entire puzzle. You know, the number one thing that makes this mod possible, a condom, all right? You need to have one of these bad boys. 
Um, basically, any condom will probably do. Um, probably just use any that you have around. Uh, but what we're going to use it for is that we're gonna take the balloon portion of it, we're gonna cut that off, and then we're gonna use the little ring that's at the base. And that's going to be the band that we're going to use for our controller because it's very, uh, you know, obviously you could take some paper towel, wipe the lubricants off, you're not gonna need that. But the latex itself is very slick. And so unlike a rubber band or other types of things that we could put around our posts, um, it's not going to have a lot of friction when the plastic of the control stick rubs against the band. Um, that's what the problem is with a lot of other types of material and the latex is not going to have that issue. So this is basically the best option, right? You're gonna get tons of um, resilience, like you can really stretch it tight and that's gonna allow you to maintain a lot of tension on it. But at the same time, you also know that uh, it's not going to rub a lot and make it kind of awkward when you're trying to move the controller along it into a notch. So with that said, guys, we know everything that we need to uh, perform this modification. So let's get down into the nitty gritty details. All right, guys, so this is going to be kind of a visual illustration of how to perform the mod. Um, I don't really have a spare controller that I want to dedicate to do, uh, performing it again. Um, and I feel like uh, it's not going to be very clean when I'm just doing it on the fly and trying to hammer and things like that. So instead, I'm just going to use um, a nice clean illustration on the computer to show you what we're going to be doing. So. First, this is the octagonal gate, right? And this is where the upper portion of it's where we're gonna be applying our mod. And you could do it across the bottom too if you want to down tilt. So, I mean, that's your thing. I prefer, um, since there's already a frame one method for them, I don't necessarily think it's, uh, it's needed, but you could do both top and bottom if you like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out uh, some dental floss across the top of here. But first I wanna point out that this gate is slightly rotated, right? Uh, if you go straight up from the bottom, you're not going to end up aligned with the notch at the top. And if you go straight across horizontal, we're going to be above this one, right? Because the whole thing got rotated. Um, it's not just straight up and down. Like, you know, at this height on the left side, it's not the same stick coordinate height as the one directly across on the right. So we have to realize that when we're actually playing on the controller. And so what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna lay some dental floss across the top of here, right? So here's my dental floss. And basically we're gonna make sure that um, in the angle here where the notches are at, that we have the same distance between the notch and the dental floss roughly on both sides it should be the same distance and then from there we're going to just take our uh, floss we're going to put a needle on the outside edge of the floss right so on the other side of the floss we're just going to lay a needle down and we're going to tape it down and we're going to remove our floss all right so now we should just have the needle and we can go into the game and basically um, 20xx is even better right you can pause it with like frame advance tilt the stick all the way up to the needle and then hold a and advance one frame and what you should see is that you still you get a pivot or not a pivot but you get an up tilt instead of an up smash right that's what you want to see and so then once we know that we've got uh we didn't go down too far to where we're not going to get um up tilt because the farther down you are the and still get this the better um that's going to give you more leeway when you tilt up and hit the rubber band that when it bows upward you're still not in the up smash region so you know what you want to do is sh aim lower at first and if it looks like when you placed your needle you're still you're only getting jab then raise it up higher until you end up at the spot where you're going to get um, up tilt instead of jab. And that's going to be, you know, the region now that's um, most consistent, right? That's going to be the most consistent placement for you. So once we've 
found the right spot for our needle, then what we do is we place our floss down again, right? And we're going all the way across, right? It's, it's, it's extending past this little circular arc and we're going to drill our holes like right out here where it's flat, all right? And so what we're gonna do, take your Sharpie and mark where we're gonna drill both holes. And that way we can just remove the floss, right? And we can remove the needle. And now what we've got is our drill points, okay? And uh, so once we have our drill points marked, we can go ahead and either drill here and drill here and it should be wide enough just wide enough that it's very snug to fit the nail into otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to have to hammer the nail in there okay and i used a hammer and it came out just fine but once we've got the nail in we're going to pull that nail back out and trim it down so i cut probably one fourth the length of the nail off of it so that it's going to sit further down because the top of the nail is uh, is like it's got a wide cap on it kind of like our control stick has a wide cap on the top right and so we're going to want that to sit as close down on the controller as we can while still providing a little bit of height to wrap the rubber band or well the condom that we're using around these two things um, which are serving as posts kind of so it's not going to be going all the way, you know, fl flush up against the controller, but it will be, um, it won't be sticking out as high as, as usual because the nail is already, hot, you know, longer than it needs to be. So we're just going to trim some of that away. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap, um, we're going to use a band, but not just like a rubber band. Um, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to buy, um, take your condom, right? Uh, what I used was just a Magnum condom, um, but actually the smaller sizes will probably have a ring that's smaller in diameter, and so that's probably going to make it, um, you know, an even tighter fit to begin with. Um, it, it's not really going to matter. You're going to tie it off anyways because almost every size is going to be too big. So if you have some just sitting around, just use whatever you've got. Otherwise, you know, just go out and buy, you know, whatever. If you get the if the smaller size cheaper, I don't know, but um, it might you know you know save a buck or two. But either way, take it right. And what you're gonna do is take your scissors and you're going to trim you know the actual uh, bag part of the condom off of the ring. What we want is that little ring that's at the base, and that's gonna serve as our rubber band. And the reason for that is because the material that the condom is made out of is very low friction and it's far better than like, you know, the grippiness that you're going to get from like any type of rubber band. And it's also incredibly um, thin. So it's, it's strong and it's thin. And that's what we want. Like uh, a rubber band, you know, like you could try to coat it in a sealant or something you're still going to want like a really narrow one and you're still going to want it to be able to be stretched really far while maintaining that strength so that it's not going to snap because we need to pull it really really tight um, so that it can you know provide a decent amount of resistance in the middle of the band which is where the stick is pressing um, we still want to have decent resistance it can't be too loose so um, because of that a condom is almost perfect. So basically, put it around one post and then stretch it over and past the other post here, all right? And from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, one of the sides of the rubber band and then wrap it around the post, then take the other side and wrap it around the post as well. And so what you should see is that you can, you can pull the end wide but because it's wrapped around the post on both sides, it should like form a little triangle here, right? Instead of just making a big triangle all the way on the outside, right? So you've got this narrow little double region here and then boom, you can like bow it wide if you want. And from there, we're just gonna, kind of like you would do with a uh, water balloon, we're gonna just wrap it over itself and then go through the middle, right? So like like this and then up and through the loop and we're going to pull it 
inward and get this knot to be like we want to pull out really far get this thing super tight right here as tight as we can and then try to get this knot to sit as close to this post as possible so that way um, if you tie your knot and it it's out here then now when you let go of the knot it's going to create a bunch of slack in here right it's not going to be as tight so if you want this to be as tight as you can get it you need to pull this really hard and then grip somewhere down here to make sure it's not going to pull back tie your knot and push it up towards the base and then pull it tight when it's already down here and that's going to give you like a nice really tight um set of resistance bands in the middle region so from there now that our knot is tied right it looks like this so here's the little knot we've got up against the base and now we're just going to trim off this outer region right so what we do is just take your scissors and cut that off um, but before you do that just take some super glue and put it on the actual knot just a little bit of super glue applied to the knot that way when you trim it it's not going to pull the strands back through and unravel and, and you wasted a condom all right so once you've done that and you've got your trim knot now the mod is actually done now this is not the perfect mod uh, in fact what you could do is instead of using nails you could use let's say uh, needles or something and poke it through the band right and then basically instead of being Here's one band and then horizontally uh, there's another band on the same vertical height. You could stack these vertically and pierce the um, each post through them, right? So now these are both at the same um, height. You're basically doubling your resistance, possibly, um, depending, you know, m most likely since these are below the cap, you're doubling your resistance at the same um, threshold. Uh, and you're also going to basically uh, make it more consistent because it's not like it hits a resistance band here and then it hits another one and gets a little stronger. So that's probably a better mod. I just wasn't sure um, if it would tear the bands having that much uh, tension on a piercing that was made in them on both sides. So you'd probably have to stack them, glue them together, Pull this one tight and glue that together and get it super, you know, uh, put a bunch of tension on it and then pierce through where it's solid. So because that's a more complicated design, I just didn't implement it for this one, but that would be like the more optimal solution for this method, just the cleaner implementation. Um, but what you're going to see now is that um, both of these rubber bands will actually be below the stick cap. Um, uh, even though I have it overlaid here, um, they should actually be below the stick cap um, because you know the posts themselves are sitting at a lower level. And what you can do then is what, you can pull the post out slightly, put a tiny bit of super glue around the edge of the post and push it back down. And, and just to make sure that the posts don't come out. Or you can instead take off um, the front side of your controller faceplate and then if the since the post is already extruding through the plastic mold you can just put a little bit of um, super glue on the inside of the plastic mold at the edge where the nail meets and that'll make it a lot neater because you won't have a little bit of residue of super glue on the outer edges of your controller but that's basically the mod guys yes there are other alternatives to getting pivot up tilts but this is the idea behind it. Uh, I kind of already showed you at the beginning of the video what it looks like. And now I'll just show you a few clips of me using it to do a couple pivot up tilts. Um, take it easy guys, and I'll see you in the next video. All right guys, I'm not really a GameCube controller user, and I'm not really a box user. You know, I play uh, Ganon and Morris on a Smash box, right? So I mean, obviously that's gonna be pretty different, right? But Clearly, you could still do Fox stuff, right? Um, uh, but, you know, I think the only things that are kind of uh, you're concerned about are the things that involve using up, right? Yeah, so if this affects anything, it's likely um, would be like things like doing like up smash out of shine or turnaround shine or shine grab. Um, 
So with Shine Grab, I notice is the only one that feels a little different. You have to press up a little bit harder, right, um, on your joystick. Uh, but the timing is pretty much the same for all of them. You just, for Shine Grab, you press up a little harder. And then same thing, like, if you happen to be one of those people that jumps out of Shine with Tap Jump uh, when doing, like, you know, like, uh, Shine out of, sh like, into Wave Dash Back or whatever instead of using Y, like, I kind of just, just use Y, but um, some people might use that. Um, that would be another instance where you might have a, a little slight different controller feel there, right, when using this. But for the most part, everything feels the same.